What's up everyone? Today I'm gonna to show you my exact behind the scenes of my hiring process. So recently on okdork.com, I wanted to hire an editor. And if you can see on the screen, I spelled it wrong. So I wanna show you how I got from nothing to where I'm able to hire someone who's very, very talented, very, very skilled, an A player, some people may call. So here's the first thing I do. First thing I do is I write down the list of tasks I want that person to be doing. And what I've noticed is that if you ever hire someone and you're not clear on what you want them to be doing, you're like, eh, though I kind of have them want, you're generally gonna set them up for failure and set yourself up to having a shitty person. So number one, make a list of the tasks. Updating content, planning this, scheduling that, whatever it is, make your list, number one. Number two, write up a damn good job description. Think about it this way, like if you dress like a scrub, do you think the person of the opposite sex is gonna be turned on by you? Probably not, right? But if you're dressed sexy as fuck, like they'll be like, damn, that person looks good. So, and the, you know, let me give you another analogy. If you put in a lot of work on writing your job uh, application process, like you will get a better quality person. It's whatever you put into it is what you're gonna get out of it. Because if I'm a really good quality candidate and I see a shitty job application, I'm like, nah, you know, there's a bunch of them that are like, hiring shitty people, come join us, right? So how are you gonna differentiate? So I wrote like hiring an editor. I probably spent about five hours and I had two other people help me edit this. Uh, to make it really good. You know, how to make it amazing, just is that a job that you would actually apply for? Is this something you would actually send to a friend that you're like, dude, I think you'd actually be great for this job. And if it's not at that level, you probably need to work on your job application. At the bottom of my application, what I do is I make them email me and you could use an applicant tracking system, which is way more advanced. We're not gonna get that into here. And I've actually found, this is really funny. I have them send me four errors or four things. So a challenge from when they have to apply on round one. People loved the challenge, so something to consider. The second thing that's really important is I make them say their LinkedIn URL and I have them do that to see if they can follow basic instructions. You can also do subject lines and you'd be surprised how many people don't send that. It's unbelievable. In round one, after you guys have now said they've emailed in, followed basic instructions, what you want to do on round two is actually test them on the list of things that they're actually going to be doing in the job. So what you do is open up Gmail, open up a writing thing, whatever it is, compose a new email. And what you're going to do is be posting in a Google form. And you're gonna save this right here, can response, make sure it's enabled in your settings, and you save it as uh, you know whatever you wanna call it. How do you create a Google Form? Go to Google Forms, you can figure that out. So let me show you the questions that I use. So I took the list of things I want them to do, and here's the questions that actually matter. How would you prioritize this project? I wanna see how they think about things. Uh, I have a certain number, numerical goal for my podcast. I wanna see how they like structure numbers and things like that. Uh, I want to see how creative they are. Get a hold of Jeff Bezos for my show. Do they just like say, hey, tweet Jeff Bezos? Or do they give me his email address and actually put in the work? It is so obvious who the 1% are that are actually putting in the effort to get the job. And those are the ones that you should be considering. Write an email. I'm seeing how their communication style is. Some people actually said, I don't think you should be in Fast Company. And it's like, okay, delete. Make copy of this article and leave comments. A lot of people couldn't figure out how to make a copy. Uh, what do you do outside of work? And then lastly, a typing test. Uh, one of the things that might be a bonus for doing the typing test is have them paste a screenshot of it to see if they can handle doing a screenshot. But I found that people that type under 50 words a minute suck. All right, so you take this form, you post it in, you saved it. So here's how to automate, automate round two so you never have to deal with anyone. So Sam emailed in, he sent it to the right email address, he included his LinkedIn profile. So what you do is in the subject bar, or in the search bar right here, to editor at okdork, which was my first thing. Secondly, it has these words, linkedin.com slash in. So now what you're doing is gonna create a filter. So you click on this, you create a filter. Let me just show you. Create filter with a search. And in this, you're gonna skip the inbox, apply a label, and then choose the can response you just wrote and create this filter. Now when anyone emails it, I don't even see them. I don't even see them. All I did was that in my form uh, right here, in responses, I just say notify me when someone submits. So I haven't even seen anyone at all. So we've had almost 70 people supply. I haven't seen any of them. I haven't had to deal with any of them. And I'm sure literally hundreds emailed in incorrectly so they didn't get the autoresponder. So now that's round two. So for round two, let me show you how I filter through and make sure I'm not a racist. The first thing I do now when I'm trying to filter through these people is I hide their name and all anything personally identifiable about them. Because I can't tell you how many times if I see like, you know, oh, it's a person I might know or anything like that, you gotta hide this completely. So as I'm deciding this, a lot of times what I do is what's my, I look for ones that are objective, binary, yes, no. So it's easy to filter out all the losers. So what you could do is like for the words per minute, what did I ask specifically? Put in the number. So this person put in a URL. This person's not gonna get a job anymore. Not with me. 
this person put in a URL, did not say put in a URL. And you're like, no, that's kind of harsh. Exactly. If they can't follow basic stuff now, imagine working with them when you're like, can you do this? They're like, uh, yeah, I did the other thing that I did, did, did. Stupid. Don't hire that person. All right. Anyways, you're going to get down to probably around five people. So I look at this number one, anything binary, it's easy to filter through. Then you have to look through like writing. Is that an email that you would like? Uh, and the other questions to see how you like. I took the last five people and then I actually gave them another comp competition. So what I did is round three, I actually gave them a real task of something fully that they would be doing and let them know that, hey, if you finish this and do well, they'll be able to talk to you. So give them a real task. So for this one, it was like, I have an episode with Jason Freed. I want you to send me a Google doc with a guest post that I could post on my blog or potentially another blog. And what I'd always recommend is give them a timeline. And after this, I do a phone call and I call it, we call it the weirdo test. So you want to do a video so you see their face because then you can find out if they're a weirdo. Uh, and, and ultimately, after you see these app, this application, uh, this final submission and the weirdo test, you can make your final decision. And this is how literally out of hundreds of people, I chose five and I'll cut it down to one. And that person generally has worked out really well. That's how I've been able to hire 40 people at sumo.com. That's been amazing. So that is my behind the scenes of my hiring process.